What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Odroid N2 Plus. Now you might remember that in 2019, Hard Kernel released the Odroid N2. I've done several videos on it. Really nice board. It comes with 2 gigs of RAM or 4 and the S922X CPU. It's definitely one of the most powerful ARM based single board computers on the market today. Well, recently, Hard Kernel announced that they were doing an upgrade to the Odroid N2, and they're calling it the Odroid N2 Plus. The N2 Plus still comes with the S922X CPU, but we have higher clocks on both the big and the little cores. You can also get this with 2 gigs of RAM or 4. I also went ahead and picked up a new 32 gigabyte eMMC module because all I have laying around right now are 16 gigabyte versions. So I'm actually really excited about this. I'm personally a big fan of the original N2 and adding some higher clocks to the CPU is definitely a big plus. And they've really wrapped this thing up. Let me go ahead and grab a knife and we'll get this out of the packaging. Over the past year or so, since the original N2 has been released, there's a ton of different operating systems available for the N2 and those should actually transfer right over to the N2+. So overall, we have the same basic layout as the original N2. There are a few key changes on the board itself, and we'll take a closer look at that in a second. But we still have our Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI 2.0, four USB 3.0 ports, and our power. And real quick, I just wanted to compare the original N2 to the N2+. It looks like they've changed the heatsink up a bit. On the original, there's some feet here that actually bring it up off of the table. They've shortened this on the N2+, and to tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure why. Both of these N2s do have a real-time clock built in, but with the new one, they've actually added a little slot for a coin cell battery. It takes a CR2032 now, instead of having to buy a proprietary one from Hard Kernel that's already soldered up and ready to go with the 2-pin connector. So as it sits right now, the big cores on the N2 Plus are going to be clocked at 2.2 GHz, which will actually give you about a 22% increase in performance over the original N2. But Hard Kernel has stated that they've tested over 300 samples of the new N2 Plus and they were able to overclock to 2.4 GHz on all 300 of those boards. And this is a 33% clock increase over the original N2, which should definitely unleash some more power for this little board. Whether you're running Ubuntu, your favorite retro operating system like Odroid Retro Arena, Bado Serra, EMU Elect, or even Android. Now, if you're not familiar with the Odroid N2, this can actually be booted from an SD card or their eMMC modules. And the eMMC modules are much faster than any micro SD card on the market right now. And if you're looking for the best performance out of your N2 or N2 Plus, I highly recommend using an eMMC module, especially if you're going to be running an operating system like Ubuntu or Android. Now before we get into testing, I want to go over the basic specs of the Odroid N2+. Plus. For the CPU, we have the Amlogic S922X. This is the revision C of the chip. We have 6 cores, 4 A72 cores at 2.4 GHz, and that's up from 1.8 on the original N2, and 2 A53 cores at 2 GHz, which is up from the original 1.9. The GPU is the Mali G52 MP4 at 800 MHz. There's two RAM variants of this board, 4 gigs of RAM or 2, but with each of them you're going to get LPDDR4 soldered to the board running at 2133 MHz. There's no onboard storage, there's no onboard Bluetooth, and there's no onboard Wi-Fi, but this does support an eMMC module, micro SD card, or USB 3.0. We have Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI 2.0 for 4K 60Hz out, a 3.5mm audio jack, 4 USB 3.0 ports, 1 micro USB OTG connector, 40 GPIO pins, a built-in IR receiver, and as for the operating systems, there are a ton available for this. Ubuntu Server, Ubuntu with GNOME, Android 9, Android 10, Android TV 9 or 10, Bado Serra, EMU Elect, Open Elect, and many more. You can actually check out their forum. There's a lot of third-party operating systems for the N2 on the market right now. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and see how the new N2 Plus performs. I'm going to be comparing it to the Odroid N2 and a few benchmarks and just overall performance. But in this video, I'm going to be running Android 9. This is their latest version that does have the overclock settings for 2.4 GHz on the N2 Plus. But definitely keep an eye on the channel because I will be making a couple more videos on the N2 Plus. I want to test out some more operating systems here from a retro operating system up to Manjaro. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the new N2 Plus, just let me know in the comments below. Okay, so here we are. The eMMC that I purchased actually had the latest version of Android for the Odroid N2 Plus, which actually allows for that overclock of 2.4 GHz. If we go into Odroid Settings, CPU, 
you see my big cores are clocked at 2.4 and my small cores are clocked at 2 gigahertz. I've also set the governor to performance just to get the best out of it and overall the board itself is feeling really snappy here with Android and I was also able to get Google Play up and running without any issues. And this is a 64-bit version of Android 9. If you want Android 10, there is a version over on the Odroid forum, but right now they don't have that 2.4 GHz overclock built in, and as soon as that's available, I'll be testing out the Android 10 TV version. So as you can see, we got the Odroid N2, 4 gigs of RAM, small cores of 2 GHz, big cores of 2.4, the Mali G52, and Android 9. So the very first thing I did was run a couple benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5 at the very top. We have the N2 Plus clocked at 2.4 GHz. On the bottom, we have the original N2 with the stock clocks. On single core performance, we got about a 27% increase on the new N Plus over the original N2. And on the multi-core side of things, we got a 20% increase over the original N2, which is really great for a small ARM-based single board computer like this. This is definitely going to help out with pretty much anything you want to do on the N2+. Plus. The next benchmark I ran was 3 Mark Slingshot. Keep in mind, they did not overclock the GPU, so scores here are basically the same. And the final benchmark I ran was N22. Over on the left-hand side, obviously we have the N2+, Plus with a 174,663, and the original N2 scored a 149,594. So we're obviously getting a pretty decent boost in performance with the all-new N2+. So media consumption on devices like this also needs to be tested. Unfortunately, with the YouTube app built into this version of Android 9, we can't get 4K, but it does 1080p60 really well. I will be moving over to some 4K content in just a second. And keep in mind, with the Android TV version, as soon as everything's ready, I will be doing a video. We can get 4K there in YouTube. But 1080p 60 from YouTube on this operating system here works flawlessly on this board. Now it's time to move over to Plex and test some 4K playback. Alright, so I got a bunch of stuff to test here, but I want to find something 60 FPS 4K. And it looks like we'll be going with Big Buck Bunny again. 8 megabits per second, 4K, 60 FPS. So far, performance really isn't that bad. I did notice a stutter here and there, but overall, I mean, it's really watchable. When I test this on other single board computers with ARM chips, it hardly even plays. So that looks pretty good, but this was only 8 megabits per second. Let's take it up a notch. We'll do 4K 60, 30 megabits per second. So it's not bad, I did notice one little skip there, but overall it's handling it. Now we're going to move on to a really high bitrate video. This is 4K, 24 FPS, 155 megabits per second. This is going to take a little while to load. Actually wasn't as bad as I thought, but it's working here. This is looking really good as a little media consumption device. Now I'm streaming these from one of my buddy's Plex servers. Let's see how this thing performs with 60 FPS playback natively from the internal storage. And again, even when playing this natively, I do notice some micro stutters every once in a while, but overall it's really not that bad for an ARM-based single board computer. It's looking pretty good if you ask me. Now it's time to test out some native Android gaming with Minecraft Pocket Edition. I've turned it to 10 chunks with fancy graphics off. It's playable here. I mean, we're not at a constant 60, but it tries its hardest to keep it there. I have seen it go as low as 35, but keep in mind, it's Minecraft. Here we have Real Racing 3. Performance is great. I test this on a lot of devices. It's a very well optimized game. I would have loved to test, let's say, Call of Duty Mobile or even PUBG, but we're working with a keyboard and mouse here.
Now it's time to move over to a little bit of emulation. I will have a full emulation video coming up testing several different systems, but I wanted to show some off in this video. Dreamcast using ReDream at 1280x960. You're not going to have any trouble with this one. Here's PSP using PPSSPP at 3x resolution, no frame skip, no hacks, Tekken 6 using the Vulcan back in, we're at full speed. And I know somebody's going to ask about this game, so I figured I'd throw it in here. We're at 1x resolution, no frame skip, no hacks, and it's running really good. This is some of the best performance that I've seen out of the God of War games on a single board computer. And finally, at least for this video, since we're using a 64-bit operating system here, we can install Dolphin. This is the latest build from the website. If you go with Dolphin MMJ, it's out of date by about a year and four months, so the official development builds from the Dolphin website are the way to go. This is Soul Calibur 2. We're using the Vulcan back end, and it's trying so hard to keep that 60 FPS frame rate. Here we have the beginning of Super Mario Sunshine. This is the easiest part to run in the game with the Dolphin Emulator. Still using the Vulcan back end, we're at 30 FPS, but when we move over past this kind of tutorial stage, you'll see it drops down from there. Now this is getting really close to playable, and there is a chance if I test a different operating system with a different build of Dolphin, we could get 30 here with Vulcan, but I need to get down to it and test it out. So overall, I'm really impressed with the new Odroid N2 Plus. On paper, it really doesn't seem like a big jump from the N2, but in my testing, it definitely outperforms it in pretty much everything from 4K video playback, emulation, and even native Android gaming. Now, like I mentioned, I will have a couple more videos coming up on the Odroid N2 Plus, so if there's anything else you want to see running on this, be it applications or a different operating system, just let me know in the comments below. I will have a full emulation video coming up, and I also want to test out Manjaro, but there's a lot of other stuff available for this board in the wild, so just let me know in the comments. But that's pretty much it for this video. I will leave links to Hard Kernel's website in the description and Ameridroid in case you're interested in picking one of these up. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and like always, thanks for watching.